Hi everyone, welcome. We're back today with Amber Wentworth. I'm so excited. She is Lone, Lone Star Keto, is that right? Yes, Lone Star on Keto Girl. Yeah. On Lone Star Keto Girl on Instagram. And she's gonna be telling, sharing her story of weight loss and doing keto and carnivore. And we're just so excited that you're here with us, Amber. It's gonna be awesome to learn and get to know you a little bit. So welcome. Thank you, Caitlin. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So uh, tell people who may not know you what, you know, where you got started with health and, you know, go way back if it helps people and to, to hear about, you know, how you got into this and where you are now and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I, I pretty much started noticing I was different than other kids. When I was about 10 years old, I was in the fifth grade and I kind of started to develop a little bit and get a little pudge on me. And all the, all the other kids honestly were very, very thin. So I knew that I was kind of not the same. And sometimes I would get teased and that kind of happened through middle school too a little bit and I got teased a lot by the girls and I think some of it now looking back was probably jealousy because I actually like had something to show you know I guess I don't know but uh, it made me feel very um, embarrassed about my body and so that kind of started me along the whole lines of hating my body um, you know having all these um, emotions and etc and so I I, I wanted to like be skinny like those other girls, be these little sticks. And so I started dieting at a very young age and you said stopped you were eating. Fifth grade? Or... Yeah, fifth grade is when I first started noticing. And it was shortly after that that I, I started like doing diets and things, sometimes wow. on my own. And sometimes my mom would help because she struggled with the same thing too. And she didn't want me to have to struggle. So, you know, she kind of kind of pushed me in that direction a little bit and you know, in a way it was a good thing, in a way it wasn't a good thing. So it's kind of, you know, and anyway, I, I kind of struggled with that all through high school. And right about the age of, I was probably almost 16 years old, I start, I just stopped eating. I just flat stopped eating. I wouldn't eat for a week at a time. And then I would have like a spoonful of peanut butter. And then I would go for another week without eating. Needless to say, that was like the first steps in anorexia. And so I, I dealt with that a little bit, but it was never full blown because I had a friend of mine who was doing something that seemed so much better at, at bulimia. You know, she ah. would like gorge herself and then, of course, purge, right? And I thought, well, I can have all the food I want and then just not have to worry about the calories, right? So I started down that line and it was very, very severe. And uh, that just kind of dominated my whole entire life. But luckily, uh, my now husband, who is my high school boyfriend, um, found out and it was embarrassing. It was humiliating. It was disgusting, you know, and he really wanted me to get help. But of course, I'm not about to say anything about that because it's embarrassing, right? If to let anybody else know you have that issue. And, uh, he threatened to tell my mom and for whatever reason that terrified me more than dealing with the issue. So anyway, I dealt with that kind of, <laughs> you know, it's still in the back of your mind. And uh, I, I, I kind of dealt with that. And for a while, I was fine. I, I was fine. And I was kind of at a an average weight for somebody, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, you know. And uh, when you say you dealt with it, what do you mean by that? I just kind of, uh, I, because I had made a promise to my husband, boyfriend, whatever at the time, that I would not do that again. That was, that's, kind of what kept me from doing it, believe it or not. But the urge was still there. I mean, the the emotional issues that I still had going on inside me and my body, uh, you know, hatred, I mean, literally hated my body with a passion. And uh, so that was still there. It, it, but I did revert back to, you know, being anorexic or bulimic, whatever you want to say. I, I never, never did that again. I really didn't. Wow. Um, my husband probably wonders still if, if I did that, but I, I didn't. And so, but it's still in the back of your mind. I mean, you, you think, well, gosh, I can, you know, just do this and I would be. Again. Yeah. Because when I was doing that, I got down to 98 pounds 
Um, yeah. I am a small person. I'm five two, but um, ninety eight pounds. I was really, really little, but I still have these things right here. You know, these these breasts that I detested, and so I still felt fat at ninety eight. Yeah, and so what, yeah, and I was teeny ever, tiny. <laughs> yeah, that's a brain issue, when you know, yes. it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, it sounds like you didn't. You were always just hating your body, no matter what size it was, you know, just because you were, uh, oh, absolutely. maybe you just weren't a- able to accept the way your body changed from being a child to a woman, you know? Absolutely. It happened way too early, <laughs> you know, which made me different and made me feel like a freak and, you know, abnormal. Nowadays it's very common. And I think so much of it has to do with our diet now. Well, you know? it's also so due back- your parents kind of preparing you for that maybe, maybe they didn't know to tell you, you know, Hey, I don't think they knew how, how much that affected me, how much, uh, self body hatred, whatever you want to call it was. And I'll see. And then, you know, like in my early twenties and all, you know, it was okay. I, I, I was fine. Um, I was, you know, I was probably like about a size six, eight, you know, that's not bad. And then I kind of started gaining weight again. And it's, then I had kids gain more weight, gain more weight, gain more what? weight. I dieted. Uh, are just, you talking about? I, a, I'm sorry. You're talking about about you're in the mid twenties now. Yeah. Is yeah, that when yeah. you had your kids, mid twenties? I was 25 when I had my daughter. Yeah. And I had started to gain weight prior to that. Um, when I was pregnant with her, I actually had lost weight. So I was thinner after having her than when I got pregnant. So that was kind of a weird thing. I, I was gestational diabetic, so I had to watch everything. So I think that, and, and it scared me. And, and so I was really careful with my diet and I did what they told me at the time. And I cannot even believe things are so different now because I was told, you know, to eat, you know, fruit and six times a day and, you know, that typical advice, right? I did that. Now I, I did somehow not gain weight, only gained five pounds with my daughter. I know that sounds crazy, but, um, but I also probably was calorie restricting to a degree, even though I had to eat six times a day, but the, but they had everything planned out like your typical, you know, food pyramid back then, you know, you have mostly vegetables and fruit, and then you have a little bit of meat, you eat everything low fat, right? And then they did say no sugar, no cakes, you know, stuff like that, which at least that part was good. But, um, you know, my daughter came out fine. She wasn't huge or anything like they told me she was going to be. She's normal. But uh, it, it was a scary time for me. So I, I was really careful in doing what I was told to do. Um, but something happened from, like, age 25 to on up to, like, I think it was a 2008. I was at my absolute heaviest. I was at least 240 pounds. You know, I'm 5'2". And I, I, I probably was more. I didn't weigh at that point. I'm just guessing it was probably more. So, you know, that was pretty devastating to, it was to how much, know two, that. How much? 240 or more. Okay. Yeah. That's a really hard. Five two. <laughs> two, five, two yeah. person. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when I would look in the mirror, I would deny it. I'm not stupid. I knew I was large, but I would deny it. And I would wear these really big clothes. Like I have this picture here. Um, So I would wear these really huge t-shirts thinking that that would hide everything. (laughs) And so I just kind of denied it to myself, you know, that it wasn't really that bad. I think you do that as like a coping mechanism. I mean, I was also 240 pounds in, in college at the end of college. And I mean, I'm a lot taller than you, but it was still a very, I was very heavy on me and hard on me. And, but I was, I remember when I was at my heaviest weight, just being like in denial about it, really in denial. Like it's not that big of a deal and whatever. And I was buying, you know, 1820s at Walmart, you know, and I was like, it's no big deal. I'm like, yeah, it was a big deal. It is a big deal. I remember one of my friends saying like, she was really sweet and she was like just put down that box of cereal like come to the gym with me like she was athletic gee if it was that easy yeah she wasn't she wasn't 
being rude about it. I think it was really coming from a loving place. Sure. But that I always remember that and and I was kind of like, well, she's trying to help me. Like it kind of it kind of yeah. broke through a little bit. I'm not saying I changed right that moment, but I'll always remember that when she was saying, just come with me. And I was like, I'm not going there, you know, because I was, I was like, I'm too heavy to go there. It's not, it's embarrassing. You no. Know? Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So you That's had, true. so you, that was after your second child or your? Uh, yeah, I, I had already had my second child. By 2008, like I said, I was just ballooned up. And uh, I started having some really, really bad health issues. I didn't want to, I was still in denial about everything. I didn't want to have to deal with the fact that I knew something was wrong with me. My heart, I don't know what it was, uh, high blood pressure. And I refused to tell my husband, so I hid it from him. And I was at home during the day with the, you know, I had kids. And so I stayed home with the kids. And I would do like the activity part of my day, the chores that took, you know, more physical activity during the day so he wouldn't see. And just doing something simple like changing the kitty litter. I kid you not. I had to lay on the couch for an hour to recover. It was horrible. And then whenever he was around, I had to pretend. Like yeah, short I, yeah, yeah. And, and I would feel it just boom, boom, boom in my head. And uh, I, I, I could feel, I mean, I could feel the pulse in my wrist, you know, they would just, I knew, I knew that something was really bad. And I ended up having to go to the doctor anyway, for something that was so totally unrelated. And it was minor, I can't even remember what it was. And they do your typical blood pressure, you know, check all that stuff. And the nurse said, I'm going to need you to lay back and I need you to relax. And then I st they started wheeling in this EKG machine and they're putting me all on it and everything. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, and, and they said, uh, if this does not come down really quick, we're going to admit you to the hospital. And I was like, what the heck? You know, You're I hadn't told my husband anything. Yeah. It was like 210 over one something, one, 100 and something, 102, something like that. I don't know. It, it was super high. And um, they what's, gave me. What's normal? I can't remember. Uh, 120 like over 80. 120 is something 80, like that. I yeah. think normal. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. They change it. I can't remember what's what anymore. But uh, yeah. So then they did a whole battery of tests on me and it came back that I was pre-diabetic. I had, I had to go to a cardiologist. I had to do the stress test. I was put on three different medications, one of them with a diuretic. Then I had to, you know, kind of be really careful what I ate, but yet they didn't really make a big deal of the pre-diabetic thing. That actually scared me more than the high blood pressure and the heart issues or whatever else was there. Um, because I watched a lot of my family members deal with it and my grandmother, oh my gosh, I mean, she had it so bad. It was just always injecting herself and et cetera. And that scared me to death. So that was a reality check. And that made me go, hello, wake up here. So I do the Weight Watchers, right? Well, <laughs> and I well lose... before, you, before you get into the Weight Watchers, so what do you think made you gain all the weight? I don't really know. I, I think I, I just had such a hatred for myself, my body in particular. I, I always felt like I had a disconnect between the person I was inside and the person I was on the outside. And I hated my body. Like I've said before, I even physically hurt myself on times because I hated myself so much. And I was so angry that my body wouldn't do what my mind wanted it to do. And so it was like, to me, my body was my enemy, you know? And so I, I, that's the only thing I can think is that, you know, I, I just had such a, you know, negative self-image that I, I said, the heck with you, I'll show you, I'll just keep eating and really make you suffer, I guess. I don't know. You know, it's one of yeah. those interesting. Well, it's a coping mechanism for stress. And, yeah. and um, I mean, it sure. sounds like, it started on early. So, okay. Very so now you, so you got all these medications and you went yeah. to wait. So you decided to go to Weight Watchers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and I had done Weight Watchers multiple times before. Um, I've done just about every diet. I forgot to mention that I've even been on medical ones in high school where I 
I sneakily got my dad to sign for it because <laughs> my mom and dad were, you know, divorced. And mm. my, I knew my mom would never agree for that. So I like a liquid diet. To, no, it was just one where they they put you on really minute the amounts diet. of food. Yeah. And no. they just monitored you. You know, you had to go up there. You had to get your blood pressure taken. They took your blood and stuff like that. So they had to have a parental signature. So, you know, at 16 years old, I'm already doing that. Anyway, so I went through all these different diets. I did the ridiculous bad ones too. I mean, really I've done everything, but okay. So I went back to, and I did the Weight Watchers and I lost, you know, probably about 115 pounds, depending on how heavy I really was at the time, but it was about 115 pounds, you know, and I was a gym rat. I was going to the gym about six days a week for anywhere from two to five hours a day and working out. I did weights. I did free weights. I did the, you know, other weights, um, I can't, the machines. And I did every cardio class I could possibly do. I went to four different gyms to make sure I got all my cardio. And <laughs> the crazy thing is, if I did not do that, my weight started coming up again. Oh, wow. So yeah. And it got to the point where I knew I could not keep that up anymore. I was tired. I couldn't keep doing more, 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 and keep cutting my food more, more, and more. I couldn't do it anymore. And, and I'm a very determined person. When I set my mind, nobody's going to get in my way. I'm going to do it. But there comes a point where I had to realize that I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't keep doing that. So I'm an all or nothing person. I stop. <laughs> so it's the whole, you know, crap that got me. Oh, no. Yeah, I stopped. I, I, yeah, I just stopped. And I had also hurt my back in a in a car wreck, and so it made it a little bit difficult to get back into the gym. And so that was kind of a nagging issue too. And so between the fact I couldn't go to the gym when I wanted to, and I still knew that I had to keep doing more, and more, and more. And then, you know, the, the you know, deprived of food and getting so aggravated about that. And, you know, I, I would watch other people eat and I would be so jealous. I wished I could eat that, but I would never allow myself to do it because I'm just that kind of a person. But I would feel anger at the other people who could do that, even people who were obese, because I'd be like, I wish I could eat what they're eating. I didn't even care that, that they were suffering, that, you know, being obese. I didn't even see that. I just saw that they were getting to enjoy something I couldn't. And so, you know, obviously I went off the wagon, whatever you want to say. And I gained ugh, like 55 pounds back before I caught myself again. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of by, by a miracle that, and this is how I got started. And I know people are very negative about this, but, um, sometimes I needed a catalyst to like get myself going. And then once I was going, I wouldn't be stopped. But my daughter had a friend was selling a product, exogenous ketones. And I had never heard of that. I had never heard of keto. I've never heard of ketones, any of that. I had no clue about that. So, um, so what, just tell us what, about what time frame is this now that you're talking about? This was, um, a little over two years ago. Okay. Because I started in June of 2017 on keto. So it was right about that time. And so I started taking the product and I felt this overwhelming, oh my goodness, I'm not hungry. I'm satiated. I feel wonderful. And it's the ketones. And so the more I learned about it and I started discovering this thing called the ketogenic diet and how you can produce your own ketones. And I thought, oh my gosh, let me try that because if that makes me feel as good as this product does, then this might be, you know, my answer. So I started delving more and more into it and I, I started, you know, moving to the ketogenic diet. So when you were Sorry. taking the product, were you doing keto at all or just taking the product? I was taking the product and I had already cut out, you know, the sugars, the pastas, all of that anyway. So I guess you could say I was low carb mm -hmm. without really realizing that was low carb. And then I just kept taking it further, 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 further till I was pretty strict keto. And I felt amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. I looked at my husband and I was like, I can live like this the rest of my life. And to me, that was one of those moments that, 
it was such a relief to me because with all the other diets, I knew, I knew in the back, back of my mind that I couldn't maintain it. There's no way I couldn't do it because it was too depriving, too, you know, miserable. I was hungry. I was angry. Well, it has yes. to be. It just did not work. Just to keep on that, I mean, it has to be like an obsession of just working out, yeah. counting, yes. you know, and using fit, fit day or whatever thing. It's <laughs> yes. like, so, so, well, I mean, I don't fault you for that. I mean, at least it was a good way to get started. And I mean, oh, for sure. Open your eyes and, you know, and some people do need, and sometimes, I mean, those products are expensive. So some people need, I mean, I was a trainer for seven years and people needed just like in personal training, some people need to throw down a thousand dollars before they are committed. Right. You right. know, so it's yeah. that product is expensive. So if yeah. you know, well, I paid you know, $150 or whatever a month for this, I need to be so following it or whatever. So for sure. You know, that's human nature. Yeah. And it was just such an epiphany for me, really, because I had never felt so relieved to know that there was a way that I can maintain my loss and, and live my life and be happy and not feel deprived and not be angry and miserable. So that was like the most wonderful thing to me in the world. And that's why I, w I wanted it to be such a voice for, for, for keto because it literally saved my life. You know, I, I had hid for so long when I was big and I didn't go out and I didn't do fun things with, you know, I was embarrassed and so I stayed home and I missed out on so much and you know I just it was so you wonderful to think that maybe you were hiding from the so world hiding. absolutely I sure was I mean it I mean that, that's just a shame because that's what our culture kind of teaches us that's like oh, yeah you know it but really you don't have to you know it's just like right you, you don't want to be in pictures and I mean and also just kind of kills your motivation to even oh, go because yeah. you're like, well, none of my clothes fit me, so I don't even want to go out. I don't want to wear sweatpants. Oh, yeah. You oh know? yeah. And when you had to go like to a wedding or something, oh my gosh, that was yeah. Crazy. You have to find trying something. to find something. Oh. I know. And, and my my attitude, and I've said this before, and it's a very hurtful thing, but um, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. It's like why? <laughs> and that's how I felt. You know, and then I felt you very still, unattractive. And, yeah. and you still have, and you go and you still don't feel good, even in the no. thing that it took you three hours to find no. or whatever. No, no. Because you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. I mean, I've, I've had both attitudes. I mean, I've had the idea, the attitude the, you're saying where I just want to stay in and hide and stuff. And then I've also had times in my life where I was like, screw it. You know, this is the only time I have. I'm going to go. I don't care what I look like. I'm just going to have fun anyway. And most of the time that was like, I had to drink or something so I could, you know, be <laughs> Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get you that. Know, but but I was like, I'm going anyway. I don't care what people think or whatever, or I'm just going to, I'm not going to stay inside. But I mean, that was more when I was younger and stuff um, that I was just like, I'm going to have fun anyway and whatever. So, I mean, I, I've had yeah. both feelings and I'm sure, I'm sure you've had times too, where you're like, I never did. No, I did not. I envied people who could do that. Seriously. I, you know, you'd see somebody like on the beach and they're in a bikini and they're just hanging out all over the place, but they're confident. Yeah. Well, I don't know that I would put on a bikini. I'm like, I wish I could be like that. Yeah. Like, I don't know that I put on a bikini when I was really heavy, but I would just maybe make the best of it make the best you know, I mean, maybe I wear one piece and a sarong or, you know, something and then right. just say, well, I'm going to get some sun and I'm going to swim because I love being outside, you know, so. Um, and also I grew up with really, I, my dad is really overweight. And so I always saw him just kind of doing it anyway. So he was kind of my, my role model of just like, yeah. have fun anyway. It doesn't matter, you know. That's, that's pretty awesome. For yeah. me, I just did the complete opposite. I just, no, I just couldn't. I, I 
I couldn't. <laughs> and so I missed out on a lot and that, that really, you know, stunk, but, uh, I'm, that's okay. I'm making it up for it now. So yeah, you're, you're making up for it. Okay. So, so you felt way better doing keto yes. and yes. you, you lost the weight again. Yes. That you yes. Gained. yes. I, I, I got down to a zero to, um, 118 pounds and, um, I've been able to pretty easily maintain it. Um, I, well, we'll get into carnivore here in a minute, but, uh, yeah. So it, I felt amazing. I was no longer depressed. I, I, I was in these, you know, energetic, happy moods and, you know, life. It was like reliving everything all over again it, with everything being in color where I had been living in black and white. That's what it felt like. It was just like this whole new world to me. And, you know, I just felt like, ta-da! And it was, it's, it was awesome. And, you know, that's kind of why I do what I do because I don't want anybody to have to suffer like I did for so long before they found this, you know, awesome secret or what it seems like it's being kept a secret. It's up for, you know, us loud mouse, but, you know, <laughs> but, you know, yeah. mainstream, you know, they yeah. want it. Mm. So. Well, then, I mean, and I don't even think of it. For, I mean, to me, it's not even really a diet. It's just the way we're yes. supposed to eat. Exactly. And yes. that's why it feels it, it that's why it shouldn't it doesn't have to be that hard and you have energy and you're not starving yes. and all those things yes. and your brain is working better and you're not obsessed it's very with, liberating you're not obsessed with food and all that stuff because yes. yes. um, you're finally full and you're not you're not yes. craving macronutrients or micronutrients you're like you're getting everything that you need. So you can think about other things, you know, that's the, exactly. the freeing part of it. Cause I mean, I've just, like you said, I've always been hungry, 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 just, and I always thought I had some kind of a, I really thought for so many years that I had a, like a care, like, like a character flaw or something that I was just obsessed with food. And, I get it. And I mean, I, now that I'm, you know, now that I'm finally, and, and it happened on keto too and paleo. I mean, I did paleo and keto and, and it, they all helped me so much with that. Like, oh, I just, I don't have a, I don't have really a, you know, a disease or something. I just have a, a you know, cause every now everything's a syndrome or, you know, a, a oh, condition yes, yes, or something. Yes. It was like, no, I don't, I just was never getting the right food, you know? So yeah. anyway, all right. So you then so you were doing good on keto. You got down to a zero mm -hmm. two, and for you, that is what you wanted. And you know, you're yes. a, a you're a small person, a shorter person, so that is uh, right for you. And then, so why did you feel that you wanted to switch to car carnivore? Well, uh, I'll back it up a little bit. On keto, I was was able to get rid of almost all of my blood pressure medication except for one and the diuretic was even removed from that so it was a lower dose no diuretic plus the other two medications were gone and I also uh I was no longer pre-diabetic wow and yeah that was huge for me so those two big things and I also suffered <laughs> to me really I'm just bad. like that always happens <laughs> yeah right I forgot to mention it that's so normal for us yeah um, right. but yeah, in norm, in regular world, that is amazing, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is amazing know, right? for everyone, for anyone. I mean, it's amazing. So, so you got off all those medications and yes. see, see, that must've and, been because you cut all that fat out of your diet, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Cut all that fat out. Uh-huh. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what my problem was is that yeah. I literally was zero fat. I even had my trainer one time telling me, girl, you have to eat some fat. But I had such a fear of fat because it had been drilled into us for so long that I, I would, I, I would not eat fat at all. Like nothing. If it had fat in it, I wasn't eating it. You know, I ate the leanest of everything. And my, my trainer looked at me and said, eat a freaking candy bar. And she was like, oh my God, I've never said that to a client in my life. See what you're doing to me. <laughs> and so even she knew, even in the low fat world, I was eating way below that. 
I was losing my hair. My skin was yuck. I mean, it was just not a good thing. I mean, probably who would have thought it was from lack of fat? <laughs> so yeah, fat's, fat's bad. It definitely is bad. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yes. now I started giving myself fat. Oh my goodness. It's like everything changed. I just felt so much better and so much more energy and I was looking healthy and yeah, it was awesome. Um, also, um, I had acid reflux really, really bad. Like I couldn't lay down without acid coming up into my mouth. Literally. It was terrible. Oh, wow. I was on Nexium and you probably have heard these articles here lately saying how bad those particular drugs are. I was on it for eight years every single day. Yeah. That's scary. I don't even know what damage that did to my body. I hope I can reverse that. I don't know, but, um, I was able to get off of it, all of it. I have not had Nexium in what, over two years now, or well, about two years now. So that that's a pretty major thing, I think, after, you know, seeing those scary articles. So that's yeah, amazing, because what that does, it stops your digestive enzymes from coming out the way they need to. And then that means you don't absorb your food. So yeah. you're running into bone density problems as you get older and oh, sure. all kinds of nutritional deficiencies from we actually need more stomach acid not less so that's exactly scary and um with the acid reflux that's like when you're usually when we eat a lot of bread and all that kind of stuff that that little valve at the top of our stomach yes. gets pushed with gas it kind of opens and that's when that mm -hmm. It's not yes. because of the acid. It's because that valve is open artificially kind of by the bad yes. food that we've been eating. And then it kind of travels up and it's not that you have too much acid. I mean, I know, you know, this, I'm just explaining. Oh yeah. No, to it, a lot of people don't know that. And so they just think they have, they make excessive stomach acid. Well, no, it's not that. So yes. It's yeah, that, that, is that your machinery is not working right to keep yeah, things in place because of usually because of bread and rice and carbs and all that. Yes, carbs. Junk. Love the carbs. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty major. Um, oh, and also I had rosacea, like really bad. If you look no. at some of my be before pictures, you can see that I had like these little bumps all around here. I had these little veins that kind of came out here, uh, like an alcoholic kind of look you know what I mean and uh I look like Rudolph you know in these bright you know cheeks and it was really bad on keto that cleared up the bumps and the little lines and some of the blushing but it wasn't all gone and I still had to take that little bit of a blood pressure medication and um I I started getting more involved with the social media and uh, I met Brett Lloyd I know you know who he is, a uh, thankful carnivore, and uh, he was really big into the carnivore, and so I kind of started paying a little bit more attention to carnivore. I thought, you know, at the time, oh, that's kind of extreme, I don't know, you know, and, and I was never a meat eater, really, honestly. Um, you know, chicken was what I ate, and I only ate a little bit of that. It was mostly vegetables, and at one time, I thought oh, I could be a vegetarian. <laughs> oh, goodness, but uh, I'm glad I never went there, but I, I, I thought I could. Anyway, so I started kind of paying more attention about that and, and how it's helped people who, whose issues weren't completely addressed with keto. And I thought, I, I'm into experimenting now. I, I'm trying to, you know, find that. I, I want to, you know, experience things so I can talk about them in, you know, an intelligent manner, you know, and it's kind of hard to be talking about something that you've never done or researched or anything like you see so many people do these days. They just want to jump out and bash you when they've done no research. But um, so I thought, I'm going to just experiment. I'm just going to see. And so I started carnivore, but I started where I still did dairy. So the cheese, the cream, uh, you know, that kind of thing, sour cream. And um, I was eating eggs, a lot of eggs, actually. And um, I kind of gradually, I don't know why, I think it was just because I was, I was so, uh, had so much, so much nutrients or whatever that I didn't feel the need to have the other stuff. So therefore I didn't crave it. And so I didn't really care about it. So pretty easily I gave up 
the cheese and the heavy whipping cream and, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, so all I was left with was meat and egg and fat and occasional butter. But then I decided after he hearing so much about eggs maybe causing some issues, I thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that too. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this as an elimination diet. And then maybe add it in later just to see if my body actually reacts to it. I always thought I didn't, but how do I know if I've never eliminated it and got down to the bottom where there's nothing else but me? So that's kind of why I did that. And, and uh, I'm, you know, lucky enough to say that my rosacea is cleared up even more and I am no longer taking medication of any kind. So, wow. And I've been carnivore almost four months. So, I, and I still have a lot of healing to go. I, I feel it. I, I can tell that my body still has a lot more going on that needs to be dealt with. And so I'm really curious to see, you know, what happens. I'm kind of really hoping, you know, that this is the last little piece of the puzzle here. But so far, so good. Um, that's amazing. So, so you just, so because you had those last little lingering symptoms, that's what made you want to try. And because yes. you'd seen other people on Instagram, your friend, and I want to see live near you or see your friend. Uh, in no, or, no. Yeah. I, I live in Texas and, and he was he, in Florida. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just kind of, I, I, it's just I didn't know where he lived. Yeah. Um, we had never met in person or anything like that, just online. And, uh, you know, we would, I guess, have a lot of uh, comments in common, you know, like on the same thread or whatever. And then um, he kind of contacted me and asked if I would be interested in maybe uh, starting a podcast with him. And so we kind of started off on that road. And, you know, I started learning more. The whole thing of it was I was going to have a keto view and he was going to have a carnivore view, but it ended up that I kind of just because I'm into like, you know, trying new things and, you know, experimenting, I decided to do carnivore. And now I'm very much on the carnivore side, not that I'm not on the keto side because it is, you know, a form of keto anyway, but, um, I very much think keto is a, you know, an awesome, awesome way to live. I really do. I mean, I, I can't, you know, I'm so grateful that I stumbled across it and I gave it a chance. And we'll see what carnivore does, but so far so good. Um, I'm hoping that I say, you know, even better things about carnivore than I can say right now. And, you know, who knows, in a couple of months, a year, I don't know. But, you know, right now I, I have no plans on going back to eating plant-based foods. I, I realize how much my digestion has improved. And I thought on keto, my digestion was spot on. I thought that's the way it was supposed to feel, but I had no clue because that was my new normal. But once carnivore, just a week, I was like, huh, I, I don't have any cramping. I don't have constipation. I don't have gas. I don't have bloating. I have zero of that. And then I was like, you know what? I remember fiber giving me issues when I would add extra fiber in 